The first step is to remove the lower dash. If there are any removable items, such as a plastic ashtray, take these off first. The dash is typically connected by a couple of bolts that need loosened and a few plastic plugs. A little force will pull the plastic plugs loose. If there are power controls within the dash, they can easily be unplugged so that it can be completely removed before you start working. Next, locate the ignition wire and the constant power wire. The easiest way to do this is to follow the wiring harness down from the ignition switch. There are also wiring diagrams for specific vehicles readily available on the internet. Whichever method you use to locate the wires, be sure to use a voltage meter to verify that you have identified them correctly. Select the constant power wire. As long as it's not touching metal, it will not need to be grounded. Remove a small section of the insulation, being careful to use the right gauge to prevent the wire from being cut. Next, select the ignition wire and remove a small section of the insulation. Use a pick tool to poke between the exposed wires and create a space for the device wires to run through. Before connecting the device, use a voltage meter to test the ignition wire. Verify that the voltage on the ignition wire is zero when the key is turned off and between 11 and 14 volts when the key is on. This will confirm that you have selected the right wire. Remove the device from its packaging. You will see a white zip tie included with the device. This will be used to secure the device in place once installed to ensure accurate information about rapid acceleration and harsh braking. Your GPS device will have five wires, but you will not need to use the green or yellow wires. To ensure that you get accurate data from the device, it is important that these two wires do not come in contact with each other. Tape off each wire separately, and then tape the two wires together out of the way. Place a ring terminal on the black wire. This will be the ground wire. Next, use the poke and wrap method to connect the white wire from the device to the ignition wire. Poke the wire through the open space in the ignition wire and wrap it around the exposed area, ensuring that it has complete contact with the wire. Wrap the wire completely so that there is a solid connection. Then, take a piece of electrical tape and close off the connection. We recommend that you use a zip tie to secure tightly around both wires to hold them in place. This creates a solid hold, so if anyone pulls on the device, they can't pull the wires loose. After securing, cut off the excess from the zip tie. Repeat this step with the red wire, connecting it to the constant power wire and securing in place with a zip tie. Cut off the excess from the zip tie. Next, attach the ground wire to metal. Before you start, test it with the voltage meter to be sure that the metal is grounded. Select the ground wire and touch it against the metal to which you are affixing it. A blue light should flash immediately. Within 20 seconds, the green light will turn on and the blue light will continue to flash. This indicates that there is a solid ground. It also indicates that your ground is connected and that your device will be working properly. Affix the ground wire to the metal using the bracket, a self-tapping metal screw, and a star washer to secure it. You will notice a pigtail on the device. This exists for future use, but it currently has no function. It can be taped away or left to hang, as it will not make a connection with the plug. The device has an inline fuse. When troubleshooting, you can pull out the fuse to check it. If it is continuous, then plug it back in. Now, the device is ready to be secured to the dash. Use the zip tie that is included to secure the device underneath the dash. This is an essential step. The harsh braking and rapid acceleration functions depend on the device's solid installation. Make sure the label is facing down as you secure the device into the dash. Finally, make sure everything is solid and that the device is not covered with metal. You don't want to secure it under the steering column or directly under the fuse box because there is a lot of metal to interfere with it. This device is just under the vent, which is plastic, and the dash, which is plastic as well. However, it can be placed anywhere that is free from metal interfering just above it. Also, don't use a metal bracket to secure the device in place. Now, it's time to clean up the wires. They can be taped together with electrical tape. Just tuck them back out of the way. Once that is complete, reattach the dash.